Welcome back to Armchair Gaffers. You're here with myself, Walks, SB, and Jess. Uh, Scorch is still recovering from the Caribbean Christmas. Um, yeah, man. Come on. Hangover. <laughs> Irie Mon. Ah, cool one is. Uh, we are currently recording uh, on the 27th of December. So, as you'd expect, and from all good footballing outlets, publications, now's the time to do a review of the year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Probably the weirdest year we've ever experienced in football. Yep, and that. The, the longest pause in a league season ever. Since World War Two. Uh, yeah, one of those. <laughs> Something like that. Just the Battle of Britain. Some fuckery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, <laughs> some madness. Um, but yeah, it's a season like we've never seen before. No fans in the stadium. Yeah. One of the weirdest things that's ever happened as well. Fake crowds. Yeah. Fake crowd noise being pumped True. into games. Yeah, yeah crazy. I guess the Champions League as well being played and there was no fans, like the biggest prize in football and no one's there. Uh, but yeah, now is the time for a review of the year. So I'll ask uh, you guys individually, what have been your highlights uh, of the year in football? Uh, start with SB. Well, mine, my, my biggest highlight of this year was the day that Man United signed Bruno Fernandes. Okay. What date was that exactly? If it was such a big deal it for you, talk about the it. the 30th. Of January 2020. Okay. But what a day. The saviour. Mm-hmm. The Jesus saviour. Didn't Bruno Fernandes lose the ball and give a goal away? It doesn't matter. Yesterday. It doesn't against, matter. Um, it doesn't matter. Against Leicester. It doesn't matter. We'll be and in relegation without him. Because he makes goal. sure, if he makes a mistake, he makes up for his mistakes. Yeah. That's yeah. Why what, what do you think, man. as someone who's not a United fan, about the Bruno Fernandes signing? I think it's fantastic. An objective and objective. Bruno Fernandes signing, I'm speaking seriously for once here. Yeah? That's what you want from a signing. Do you know what I mean? That when you sign a player, mm-hmm. that's there's nothing more Bruno Fernandes could have done for United than what he's already done. I hear you. Nothing. What's his goal involvement you said? Like he's come through like four thousand goals? Wait, yeah, in, in four in three thousand games, yeah. In three thousand games, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he said last week he wants to finish the season with more Contributions, G slash A, than games. G slash A. I, I reckon know, he I will. Know just I, reckon he I think will. he could actually do it. Get it done. Did he, yesterday, what? Assist on a goal yesterday. And he gave a goal away, so that's three. <laughs> three goal contributions, Bruno. Well done. That's, that's my If that's how he plans on doing it, <laughs> I'm going to need to have a word. So uh, Bruno Fernandez signing for United was one of your highlights. Just one of your highlights from 2020. Craziest year in football. 2020 for me... I would say the highlight. Um, was probably the emergence of Erling Braut Haaland. Okay. Because there's all this hype around this guy. Yeah, Strasbourg goes we score goals in Strasbourg, yeah. I'm like, okay. Where is Strasbourg? Never heard of this place. Austria. And then he's gone to the Bundesliga. Yeah. The big step up, man. Yeah, that's is good, yeah. 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 Man, yeah. And he scored goals in the Bundesliga. Mm-hmm. He scored like 11 goals in one game for Norway under 23. <laughs> did, did, did you see that? He's, he's the joke. talisman of Norway's national team already. Fair yeah. enough, they didn't qualify for the Euros. Mm-hmm. He's done pretty well in the end of last season, the Corona Cup. Yeah, mm-hmm. as we're calling it. And then this season, they've given the number nine shirt. He said, oh, number nine is good, yeah. No, no pressure. Goals. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you goals in return for this number nine, yeah? And oh. he's done that as well. He doesn't care. He doesn't Champions care. Champions League, I think now he's on, I think it's 15 or 16. He's it's gone ahead stup- of uh, yeah. Ronaldo. Exactly. He's Adriano. Gone ahead of, yeah, it's, it's stupid. Um, they're not really putting those numbers into context, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's it's, it's kind of disrespectful, but they're not lying in it. Yeah, so for me, the emergence of Erling Braut Haaland okay. was... Um, was a uh, a big highlight for me this year. Second one would probably be the emergence of young Bukayo Saka at Arsenal. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. the guy just does the simple things well. Tidy, tidy player, man. Where tidy, did he come tidy from tidy as well? Like, I never heard about he him went, in the Yeah, youth, the like, youth setup. I never really heard. Just hit the first team. He's Mad definitely team. usurped a few like, youth prospects that were ahead of him. I like players like that that... There wasn't the main guy in the youth team. Kind of like, 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 like Rashford, Rashford, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. just literally, you got your chance and you took it. That's what I like. Yeah, now I want to know, sorry to go off on a tangent, but that's what I do. 
Euro 2020. I keep asking the same question. Yeah. Is Saka going? Yes. I think he books his place because Southgate lacks playing three at the back, five at the back. Saka can play that left wing back role, even though that's not his actual position. He's played there a, a fair bit. So I think he can play there. And he's young, exciting in a strange way. And I've said this in a few like my, my football groups. He plays with like a maturity that you wouldn't expect for someone that young. And it's not all stepovers, flair and 100 miles an hour. But he just makes the right choice, which is Decision good to see. Is... Yeah. yeah, it's good to see. It's um, refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big up Saka, man. Um, what, what about you, Dan? You got a moment of the, of the year? My moment was probably United Year, last game prior to the world changing. And that was the Manchester derby. It was United beating City for like the second time within probably like 10 days or so. So that was big. Um, I didn't think it was like a, a crowning moment where the power shifts back and they become the noisy neighbours again mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, but it showed me that there was something in this team and I guess Bruno again being a talisman um, I remember yeah it was the quick free kick to Martial and Martial finished that and then McTominay scoring oh, yeah. late on yeah, from a uh, defensive mistake from maybe Edison cool. um, so that was that was sick Bruno Fernandes signing is just bonkers to me um, so so good um, one thing what well, I want to say what's upset me about 2020. Because that was coming next. Some low points, man. Because with the highs come the lows. Man. Are we are we in sync, Dan? Or are we? Uh, is, this this, what, oh, is this what they talk about? Like women live together and that. And when women the, live and then you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm have to sit in between you guys. Then time. you can yeah, draw those. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. My my low point of the year was a bit, it's a bit of a weird one, okay. but um, I just feel like we need to just like. How do I phrase this without sounding like a lunatic, yeah? That's okay. Just, you, you, might, you do that all the time. We need to just like leave, like we can have a conversation about the best players of the year and not mention Messi and Ronaldo. Do you know what I mean? Because at the FIFA Pro Awards, which were a couple of weeks ago, yeah. um, they were second and third after Robert um, Lewin, Lewin Golski, you know? Oh, was the meme. Lewin Lewin Golski. <laughs> um, they were second after him, but I think there were other players i.e. Fabrizio Neymar, I'm calling Fabrizio now, okay. I think it's got a good ring to it, and um, Gianluca Mbappe, he's Gianluca now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mbappe and Neymar, I think they, and even Haaland as well, mm-hmm. may have had, and even Chiro Mobile, may have had more of a claim to second and third place over Messi and Ronaldo. I just, I just want, like 2020 was the year of change, like the whole world has changed. Yeah. So can we like change our outlook on football and the footballing blueprint and yeah and templates just, that we've been working from for 15 for years 15 years uh, yeah, is it 15 yeah, years yeah. now yeah, probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. probably isn't it yeah, a little bit, a little yeah bit so that's what really upset me about 2020 i thought things were different like you know joe biden in yeah like mm. you know like gerard lampard arteta social these yeah. players in management now mm-hmm. even perlo yeah like mm-hmm. decent isn't it but no, because you're still doing the same <laughs> thing. No, we're just Shit. giving it to... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sympathy. I hear what you mean. I hear what you mean. A year of but sympathy. It's starting to, yeah, it's starting to shift ever so slightly. You've got to be outstanding. You have got. You can't just be good. But that's not to say they didn't They, they didn't have bad seasons. No. They didn't have Messi bad scored seasons. like what? 30 plus, 35. He plus, had a lot of goals. Okay, and season. is that as much as Chiro Mobile? I think Chiro was like 32, 33. Because he was, number, like he was number one in Europe last season. Chiro Mobile. In league football. I don't know. Messi had... Um, I'm sure he scored about 30-something goals last season. Or yeah, it was one of his best returns. He did carry it. I'm yeah. just not sure he had a great project restart. Yeah. Okay. That might be a... But I just want to start, you know, look at other players that yeah. might be... Mm-hmm. You're bought, yeah. yeah we're tired. And there's players out there as well, well, yeah, that really... Make their teams tick and walk into any team Danny in the Ings. globe. <sighs> Bruno. Seriously, Dan. D- Danny Ings makes Southampton tick. I'm talking about players like Joshua Kimmich and Leon Goretzka. Oh, okay. I'm going that way. Players that actually win things. Fair enough, Ings is good, yeah? Gosh. I actually like Ings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've said in one of our previous episodes that when he first went to Liverpool, I was like, what the hell is this? Who is yeah. this guy? Um, and then he's got injured and he's left and I've seen now 
while Liverpool paid the money for him and it breaks indeed, my heart indeed. that he hasn't really had the chance, the chance to show. To, mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's actually level. like, um, put him in Serie A on, on top fitness, yeah, top form. He, he's doing big things, even in the Bundesliga. A sunny day at Hellas Verona, yeah? Mm. A sunny day at Hellas sunny. Verona, yeah. <laughs> or, um, put him, even put him in, in La Liga, you know, like a, a warm weekend, like weekday night at um, Getafe. <laughs> And uh, can Danny Ings do it on a warm Tuesday night in the Copa del Rey? Definitely against can. Hatafe. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> SB, what were your low points? My lowest point of this year, not coronavirus related. Mm-hmm. Go on. Is Oli still at the at the wheel? No, SB. No. Is it time to change? Time to change the tune, Jess. That is change the tune. It's not changing the tune though, because people might say, "Yeah, Man United are getting some results now. Yeah. We're looking better." Get the but it doesn't hide the fact yeah. that this guy can't coach. The we, guy can't coach, you and then say. he has he has three other idiots behind him. You can't coach as well. We, got, United Mike, now sit. Ahead of Spurs. Don't worry though, because Aston Villa's like second right now. United, you know I'm um, fifth, at. right? No. It doesn't matter. It's updated. Stop looking me, at the table. the table. It doesn't matter. You know I'm in fourth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On 27 points. Is that great? It's better than what you were no, you done last year. This time last to... year, I'm sure you went in fourth. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of my cousins posted a, a picture and yeah. That's we my lowest point anyway, is that Oli stood at the wall. Even no. even if you if you if no, you no, 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 no. even if you don't win your game in hand, yeah, you're still in fourth. It's, it's not, not about, enough, SB. It's not about We've gone the out table. of the Champions League it group the stage yeah. needing, what was it, a point from four games? No. Losing to Bash... Bash... Mm-hmm. Bash Istanbul Bash 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 yeah. Yeah. No, guys, yeah. guys, guys. Goal. I've never seen a goal as bad as that's that one goal of the that we've seen. conceded. No, that's that's one of the lowest. Goal. That's one of the worst goals I've seen in my entire bad goal. In football. In football, yeah, literally. Professional football. United did not crash out of the Champions League. Okay. They walked into the Europa League. Mm. That's, perspectives. It's all, it's it's all about, about perspective. Is my glass Damn. half empty or half full? It go. doesn't matter. There's wine in it. That's the most important thing. What's your lowest point, Dan? My lowest point <laughs> is United related, as you'd expect. Three semi final losses for United. Mate. What, in one year? Yeah. What? Yeah. So there was the League Cup to Man City, even though we won one of the legs, weren't enough. Did we bottle that? The first leg was just ridiculous. We gave ourselves too much to do. Played well at the Etihad. Uh, the second one would be yeah the FA Cup semi final. Getting beaten by Chelsea and Giroud who was just on it that day. And then what? Sevilla. That one. Sevilla that that again. one hurt a lot because that was the last chance that one to salvage some silverware. We were playing fairly well. The leg, people were looking tired, and yeah, we kind of what were well we beaten on the day. Uh, Wan Bissaka at the back post. Oh, don't remind me. Was now. sleeping. <laughs> Um, my biggest low point is the defeat to Spurs, though. The 6 1. Oh, that was bad. So it's, a, it's been a year of ups and downs. But yeah, that 6 1 was, was filth. Um, I like to, I like it means it things, counts for nothing. I like to end things on a high because I'm a very positive person. Cool. Another thing we can be happy about as English people mm-hmm. is our strength and depth in young English right backs. That is probably the highlight of the year. Like, people are claiming you could name a starting eleven of right backs. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Carl Walker Peters, who isn't even talked about. Yeah, you got Tariq Lamptey, who's way far down the pecking order. You've got again, Ainsley Mate announced like he's not like superb, but he's a really good, he's a he's good player. Right. Yeah, he's very competent to say the least. Then you've got your Trents, your Trippiers, your um, Wan Bissakas, who haven't. Reece been James. called up, Reece Reece James. James, and we've forgotten the Don Dada, who's been playing right centre back, Carl Walker. Yeah, Carl Walker. It's what seven or eight you've named there. Is that's horrible, isn't it? Ben Godfrey, is no, he's centre back. Godfrey's a centre back, but he's played right back, and at the minute he's been playing, de- being deployed yeah, as a left we've back. Got no midfielders. Yeah, we have. We've got Harry Winks. <laughs> okay, um, so <laughs> I've noted down some events. Across the last year in football, uh, there was Liverpool ending their 30 year wait for a top flight title yeah. uh, after Manchester City lost to Chelsea, um, and that confirmed them Premier League champions. Well done, Liverpool. You get to celebrate with no fans. Well done. You know what, yeah? I need to know for sure. <laughs> I need to know for sure. Was I the only one that was hoping the season would get called off? 
just so nope. Liverpool don't get crowned So, champions. yeah, when I was doing my research on this, I remember... Um, it, well, sorry, it started coming back to me that there was the idea that the season could just get written off. Yeah. What a time to be alive that would have been. <laughs> yeah, and be, then, yeah, yeah everyone was getting a little bit... Pretty dark for me. <laughs> wow. You know Jaffa cakes uh, are, are dark chocolate anyway, not right? What actual Jaffa cakes? Yeah, are? yeah seriously, yeah, yeah. they're all dark chocolate. Yeah, no way. Yeah, I thought it was milk. No dark no. chocolate. Only th- these are these are guys. They look so a bit too I, li- dark I like to, to be a bit adventurous. Yes, this, this week's episode is brought to you by. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not sponsoring us. Stop that. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is E Wendell Supreme Sick. Raspberry Jaffa oh. cakes. Yeah, raspberry. So um, I don't have. A lot going on in my life. So this is like, yeah, basically the end of the year roundup, and this is like where you haven't been shopping for a bit, and this was in the back of the cupboard. It's and then left there, and it's still some on. Raspberry Jaffa cakes from <laughs> March or something. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly. They're not, they're not bad. They're not great. They're like um, like United. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Liverpool ending their title drought. That was massive, but it was a bit weird. Yeah, it all happening in like the empty stadium and that. Great. Um, but who knows they might be able to, to do it again Liverpool 2021 filled the Premier League trophy with non-alcoholic wine because of the religious beliefs of Sergeant Mane and Mohamed Salah that's great team that's great team that's nice. I'm not having that I wouldn't accept that you need a replica trophy for them guys I'm sorry <laughs> No, I'm just I'm, like sometimes we have our non-alcoholic wines yeah, yeah. We, 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 I'm joking I was, I was kidding by the way because we we also have a bottle of um, McGuigan Zero. Zero. Alcohol-free Sauvignon Blanc. And it wouldn't be an ACG episode without Chess eating into the mic. Yeah, I don't eat chomping. into the mic. There's, there's a myth going around that... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. There's a myth going around that I eat into the mic. I've never not once. I was raised better than that. Uh-huh. Mm, Them mm. Jaffa kicks are hitting by the sound of it. Yeah, they yeah. are. It sounds like <laughs> the mince pies. Um, also this year... Arteta's Arsenal won the FA Cup in a comeback win against Chelsea. Arteta's first piece of silverware as a manager. You know what's funny? Wigan won the FA Cup and Portsmouth won the FA Cup. And going <laughs> next year. So um, does it really matter about okay. winning the FA Cup? Um, yeah. If, if you were an Arsenal yeah. fan, Jess. I'm going to say yeah because we live in this, this era now where people always mention trophies. Mm-hmm. Trophies. And the FA Cup is a trophy that actually matters. Portsmouth won it. Yeah, and Wigan. It's a, it's a big day. It's a big day. I, I mean, I'd rather win it than not win it. <laughs> as yes. dumb as that might sound. Yeah. I don't get that. I don't care yeah. what team you play That probably for. shouldn't need an explana- explanation, but it yeah, does like, these times. Call it what you want to call it, yeah? But I'd rather win the FA Cup than play in the final and lose. Yeah. I just wouldn't want to be in the FA Cup, man. That's not true. Nah. That's 100 not true. Is the FA Cup, does it matter anymore? Should What's it be it in 2021, dear? If the, if the Club World Cup matters, <sighs> yeah, and the European Super Cup matters, mm-hmm. FA Cup definitely matters. Fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair let, let us know. Uh, City, uh, that being Manchester City, won the League Cup for the third successive season, beating Villa 2-1. Got the best Only squad. 2-1. Just just 2-1. Uh, say, say it again, SB. They got the best squad. So it's probably about right isn't it have you noticed as well when do you remember City getting a hard draw this is said a lot whenever there's a draw including City it does get brought up a lot and you know what's mad we've played you know we've played them a few times in the semi you know what's mad which would mean that the only time City get a hard draw is in the Champions League and they always crash out oh well they they, I guess qualify and end up playing because their group stages are usually Fairly generous. Yeah. yeah. I remember them getting Guaranteed the FA Cup with like, what they got Watford in the final. But and beating what, on the run 7-0 to Watford, It was just like ridiculous, like championship teams and just like, what? The... Well, Spurs are, Spurs are experiencing the same at the minute. What is it? They're playing Marine FC <laughs> Ooh, in difficult. The, the third round. Big, difficult, big, difficult. big tie. Um, New Pocket. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? If they, if they go ahead early. He's, de- he's definitely he's not. Son. He's not against Pocket. Yeah, a bit of trivia though. Um, a lot of people don't know this um, about Jose Mourinho growing mm-hmm. up. So his dad, um, obviously, would ha- work hard at about eight jobs to support the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in, he picked Jose, Jose up from school and take him to work with him. Okay. What his, was his, his job was a, a valet <laughs> driver. He would park cars for a living. So Mourinho's <laughs> first experience, and this is just, you, you can look this up. You can look this up. Uh-huh. So Jose Mourinho's first experience of working in life was 
parking cars and buses. <laughs> so he just kind of got used to it. He the... just adapted it and translated it okay, <laughs> everywhere he went. Hey, exactly, yeah. <laughs> hey, we're full of facts here. Um, do you think City winning it four times in a row, is that something to celebrate or is that not what Pep was brought here for? Come on, I'm not even going to dignify that yeah. response. Pep wasn't brought here to win the League Cup. No. Four in a row, though. That's massive. Do you know how, how mad it is, yeah? <laughs> you know how mad it is? Every season, clubs have, like, their objectives, mm-hmm. their tasks, yeah? I don't think there's a club in the top six in the Premier League who mentioned the League Cup at all. Jose. Yeah, you're probably right. Jose, mm-hmm. that is his... Mm-hmm. And, yeah, to go back to Spurs, yeah, it was Marine FC in the FA Cup... They have Wolfsburg in the Europa and they've drawn Brentford in the semi final. Wait, Marine FC in the FA Cup? Marine. That's, a, that's, a, that's an English team? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you thought that was part I thought of you, what, you, Europa's you Super what? Conference? No. No. Is that like a hashtag United kind of team? <sighs> but like a like swimming a, version or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a Royal Marines. Yeah. But big up, yeah, big up them, man. Met, yeah, well, you've got Met Police that. and then you've got Marines what? FC. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, City, could they do it four times in a row? No one we, cares. We, we don't care. Not don't moving on. Uh, Euro 2020 was cancelled and it will still mm. be called Euro 2020 Is irrespective it? of it being hosted in 2021. That's one of the most stupid things ever. Is it even going to get hosted, you reckon, this year, next year? Oh, so basically, England, because remember the plan was to host it in It was going to be, it's, yeah, it was the least corona friendly country tournament ever because oh. yeah people were supposed to be traveling between oh. the nations so like one? there was about i think 12 host nations oh yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. scotland so, yeah. were host nation england host nation i think azerbaijan were host nation around europe there were, there were 12 countries hosting games england have applied to have host it all yeah to host it all so next summer we could have euro 2020 here in england and i've always said that England are always set for a tournament. Like, let's just say FIFA announced like a tournament that's kicking off next month, and someone's got hosted. England uh-huh. could do it because yeah. the South infrastructure Wembley, is there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And aside from Wembley, not even like the UK. I'm talking about England itself could host it. Mm-hmm. Wembley, Old Trafford, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Arsenal, West Ham. Uh, yeah, exactly. West Ham Stadium. You got Villa Park. You got the St James's Park. You got the Stadium of Light. Loads. Like England are actually set to host a tournament mm-hmm. all the time. There's none of yeah, this, yeah. these issues. Like, we don't have yeah. to b- build stadiums that using would... slave labour. Exactly, well, killing people off. Yeah, yeah, well, we can still do that if we want to, but we don't have Probably to. Nah, don't, yeah, don't want yeah. to do that. So, um, so yeah, I guess we've got that to look forward to in June should the pandemic crisis and hopefully, 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 up. it's the last tournament. Where Gareth Southgate is in charge, hopefully. That is just as personal pray. for you. That's uh, all our views. We're talking about. Keep me out of this, man. <laughs> Bayern Munich were dominant in the Champions League again. They won all 11 matches in the competition, scored 43 goals to clinch Europe's biggest football prize along with their German League and Cup victories. The epitome of a dominant season. Is this one of the best teams for current times? No, yeah. man. No. They don't even go anywhere near the Barca what? team of... Was it Owe? Owe, yeah. Come on, get, get out of here, yeah, man. Get, get, get out of here. They don't even go near the, the AC Milan team of 2005 and 2007. The one that lost Liverpool. This the one that team? Beat Liverpool. Even the they United. They Owe, won. Owe, they United won. United team, I don't think. Even. Man, can they we get out of here, man? Game, man. Can, we, <laughs> can we get out of here? Yeah, I got that. Fair play, man. Uh, let us know if this is one of the greatest teams. AC Milan's team in 2007 was a Galactico team, yeah? Dida. Your, oh, oh, my Dida, gosh. My I just dude. think that these lot, their bra- the brand isn't there yet. Well, the, um, the Bayern brand. brand isn't. It's, it's not. Like, Alfonso Davies, bit brandy. Boateng coming to the end of his years. No. Alaba said Alaba back as well. not like, yeah, really a brand, like even though he should be. Kimmich is just like football. Yeah, thoroughbred. Again. Goretzka, yeah. football man. Nabry, little bit. And Lewandowski, the TikTok master. So I feel like, yeah, <laughs> they're full of great players. But I think, I don't know what it is. Barca's team, yeah, with a yellow collar. Was that 2008? Or was that 2012? 2012, they beat United in the final, yeah? No. 2008, no, 9. Okay. Did they win in 09? No, anyway, no, that team where they had there Danny was Wembley, Alves. There was Wembley and Rome where they beat United. Yeah. yeah, they had Danny Alves. 
they had um, obviously Puyo, PK, Busquets, Mascarano's team. Mm -hmm. That was the team with Mascarano and um, that um, Eric Abidal. That was a good one. Bola. That was the team. Even Bola, Bayern's Bola. old team that they won. With, with the Ribéry and Robin. Yeah, that 2009. That was all nine. Dortmund in the final. I think that team was better than... The one where Robin scored the volley against United. Oh, yeah. Right. That year. Um, yeah. Son won the Puskas Award for his wonder goal against Burnley. Good, good goal. goal. I think it's probably like... When I saw it, I was like, oh, great goal. Yeah. Undoubtedly, but it's, I don't know if it's a Puskas, Puskas award, yeah. award worthy against Burnley as well. And the thing is, the Puskas Awards, yeah, it has to be an outrageous strike, something like, so yeah, what, what Angus Townsend done against Sets City, um, yeah. but a couple of years ago on the mm -hmm. half volley. It's got to be a ridiculously stupid, yeah, like I can't um, do this Ibrahimovic again. against England overhead kick from the, the halfway yeah. line. What it's got to be like Ronaldo against Porto, um, the free kick from no, halfway, line. not the free kick, the, the, the shot. shot. Oh, okay, where yeah. you just get to drills it past Hilton. Exactly, yeah. Like, it's got to be things like that. But Son's goal was a good goal. But those goals get scored. All the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so... It's um, like giving it to Henri versus Burnley. Spurs. Yeah, yeah against... Like, I don't well, know, one, man. The Spurs goal, yes. Yeah. It's not. Those aren't, those aren't Puskas goals. It's sad, but yeah, we're in this football place this where... Is, this is 2020. Brand, yeah, I think doing it against Bring Burnley on. and... At home, so, yeah, 2021. So amazing. Yeah. Um, also, remarkable Rashford. Marcus Rashford made a difference on and off the pitch during a challenging 2020. Feed the picky them. The 23 mm -hmm. year old's extraordinary efforts also led to him being made an MBE in the Queen's birthday honours list. M Block Europe. Feed mm. the pick them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the, the thing is, as well, he's, he's even performing all right as well. Mm -hmm. If I do say so myself. For some of you guys out there that have got a hard on for Marcus Rashford. Yeah, we've had a word <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Young boy MBE. Uh, also this year, there was the toilet roll challenge. And I bought a prop for that. Oh, my God. Are you joking? No. Are you joking? Oh, my God. We're oh not no. doing this. <laughs> it's done. It's past this time. It's, it's late. Oh, my God. Oh, this, they still make these? Yeah, I had to... Buy it off of the dealer. You find it, or <laughs> you have to fight someone for it, you or buy it off of a dealer. You, you know the toilet roll situation right now. It's crazy. So pick one, two of it. Yeah, I got this on on the black market. I had to dial someone up. So who's who's going first? SB. How much you reckon I get? Uh, what you just kick off, yeah? Yeah. I say you get a good eight. Taking your shoes or put them on? No, I'll put them on. I reckon I get that free. <sighs> I don't. I, I I don't like like where this is going. <laughs> I didn't even attempt this. I don't even happening. know where this came from. Oh shit! Oh, I can hear you now, Spee. Whatever you've done is fixed my headphones. Oh. oh. You all the time I could hear you. Okay. Let's go, people. You get three attempts, Spee. <laughs> that was nine. That's no, that was like twelve. No, nah, I was coming. I got one. I'm gonna do one more attempt. Let's go. One, go one. last attempt. Myself there. Mate, that is I don't unreal. Like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> we slide tackled the sofa. SB clocked out. Um, I don't want to do this. Jess, you're you're up. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Have any attempts? Right, SB, you've you've done very well there. I'm happy with that. Because I remember I did this in my house, and I think I got about seven. What you got for us, Jess? This is the I'm Jess. Up, Jess used to play for Espanol under thirteens. Moved to Perugia. Four. Was it Spain or was it Azerbaijan? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you know. Go on. Come it's on. The, <laughs> it's daunting this on is camera. this is gonna travel around the world. Uh, am I even in shock? <laughs> and that was what, five that or so. Five. That's five. Dan, you got me. Oh, it's Dan now. I reckon Dan's got about. Seven or eight. eight now he's got the the door clear now. Oh, I think he's got he's got about seven or eight in him. And it's Dan Walker stepping up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, oh six. Didn't look bad though. Did Didn't start? look bad. It looked all right. No. Okay, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's, he's gone. gone. This this game is terrible. <laughs> this game is terrible. Whoever invented these games needs to be shot. But you know. You got to be gracious in defeat and in failure. So SB, well done. You showed Thank us up. Um, 
I don't think any of us have got anything to be proud of no, after that, though. Dan, why would you do this to us? This, yeah, this will man. happen this year. Um, don't worry, Scorch has still got to come back and do his as well. Um, yeah, for the armchair gaffers at home, let us know how you got on in the toilet roll challenge this um, year. Also, also um, I knew you had this prepared. Mm-hmm. So I've gone back to another challenge. Um, do you guys remember back in 2000, whatever? What's my bag? Um, we had the ice bucket challenge. Oh my God. So, no, no, stop, <laughs> stop, I'm stop. I'm electronics everywhere. For fuck's sake. I, I thought, I was wondering what the... my face, that's ice bucket. I was bucket? wondering what that bucket of ice was for. Because I only get wet in two situations. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Showers and... <laughs> whoa, whoa. Um, and yeah, also in 2020, and it was the first time it's ever happened, the Villa versus Sheffield United goal line technology not being switched on. I remember watching that game oh, live, so, you know. So it just wasn't on? It just wasn't switched I on. I remember watching that game. The oh. keeper carried it over the line. Uh, Michael Oliver's watch didn't indicate that the ball crossed the line. Hawk, I apologise for the error. It had never happened in more than 9,000 games. Because I remember Villa was saying if they go down, they should have gone down. Gonna, um, they should have gone down. They should have went down from Bournemouth. Because yeah. it was one point. That's no, it. Bournemouth said yeah, they, they were supposed to be launching a legal oh, challenge yeah. and appeal and all that. And then look at that. And now Jack Grealish is, is a civil being the guy. God works in mysterious Ollie ways. Ollie Watkins. Man. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that live. Whoa. I saw the ball go. I was thinking, I'm pretty sure that he's ball's crossed in the that net. Like, he's in the net. <laughs> but because he had it like this. Like, he was, and he's like wrapped he's around the post. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's across the line. But hey, who knows? Technology, eh? Guys, I've got, I've got a gripe. Against referees, yeah. Okay. A gripe. Yeah. Well. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> but sounded um, good. But my, my little boy has got like an upset stomach, so I give him a gripe. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a word as well. <laughs> got this for referees. Yeah, sure. No, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, I've got a gripe against referees because they're cowards. They're absolute cowards. Bitches. Yeah? Isn't it? Please they, elaborate. They, they don't ever explain their decisions. So post game, players, managers, they rock so. Manager. How do you think today went? You've just lost. You just 7-1. lost eighteen yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how how do you think it went? And you've got oh. to put a spin on that. Yeah. Are you, are you happy w- 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 with the game today? <laughs> um, we got four four red cards. Um, we conceded nineteen goals. Yeah. Like, what do you think? Referees yeah, make mistakes, have howlers, mm-hmm. and they're never called into question. Why is that? Why are we protecting them? I think it's the FA. But pourquoi? Pour favor. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why in rugby? They always say this. Yeah, rugby, the rugby refs, refs might are mic'd up. up. Why can't you do that in football? It's Why not? It's a very, they're, they're very well protected, but yeah. I do feel that in England, I guess the passion, uh, the, the passion merchants, which well, we haven't all been allowed into stadiums and whatnot, it would just become hellish. And it's tough speaking after a game, full stop. And these reporters trying to trip you up but if you have made a mistake and you're a referee they're going to just try and tangle you up and then it just turns into something bigger okay for you. example a referee yeah. makes a bad call yeah mm-hmm. at least after the game say hey listen I called offside I didn't realise the ball would come off the defender yeah that's why I flagged it offside obviously we won't have that problem now because mm-hmm. we're VAR but I'm talking about in the past yeah even you can even avoid that if refs are mic'd up there's no interview because you can hear as they're as they're playing. It's a or bit if, much. It's just, yeah. number four. You get a yellow card because mm-hmm. of blah blah blah. That's your eighth tackle. That was a bit dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yellow card. There's nothing to explain after that because they've explained why. Football is just a very private much. club, yeah. and I don't it's think they need those conversations being. You see how people leaked. talk when they score goals. It's mm-hmm. like it's a secret. Every. It's a secret yeah. So yeah. That was yeah one of the worst things that's happened in 2020, and I guess yeah there were some notable football deaths as well. Unfortunately, Maradona, the man who said, "If I was in a white dress at a wedding and a muddy ball arrived, I would stop it with my chest without even thinking about it." <laughs> he never said that. <laughs> Swear to. That's why he's a goat. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Paolo Rossi, yeah. Nobby Stars, Gerard Houllier, Ray Clement, Jack Charlton. Yeah, man, some few notable. Maradona uh, also said, away. "Argentina are blessed because they have." Jesus, Lionel Messi, and me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful words. Beautiful words. Even though I think Jesus was from the Middle East. But it depends. <laughs> Every now and again, I go on Instagram and I go on Salt Bay's page and just watch the video of him and Maradona. Um, I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. So <laughs> Salt Bay's giving Maradona a steak. He's pulling out the bones one by one. Pulling out the bones. Oh, he does. And he pulls out the last one and stabs the steak. And Maradona in the background is like, oh, 
<laughs> like, you, you, you gotta watch it. It's legendary. Did you know Salt Bay has reserved McDonald's table at his restaurant for, till the end of time. Oh, so you, wow. you go to his restaurant, his little plaque there, Maradona, and his little picture and a candle. That's beautiful. That's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta love some, it. Some good shit. But yeah, 2020, it has been a crazy year for the armchair gaffers at home. Let us know your highs, your lows, any big events we missed out on, because I'm sure we did. There's been a lot going on. But um, yeah. What the start you... of this. Oh, oh, this thing. Armchair gaffers. Armchair gaffers, man. Um, How long? Today is the 27th of December, 2020. What's the importance of this date? Well, three months ago, yesterday, so September 26th, mm-hmm. we recorded our first show. Crazy. Three months ago, tomorrow, we released our first ever um, episode of Armchair Gaffers, which till today remains the most viewed episode. Yeah. In yeah. football podcast history. <laughs> <laughs> in armchair gaffer history it's All got it's world. got like nearly 14,000 views which is quite ridiculous because mm-hmm. it done that when we had about like 10 subscribers or like I think nothing. you're forgetting about Scorch the buzz international the buzz the buzz Super but since star. then we've gone on to release this is episode 15 uh, episode 15 so in 30 in 60, 90 days we've done 15 episodes um, split over I think it'll be like 39 videos yeah. few lives mm-hmm. how many hundred Instagram posts yeah uh, it's been a, it's been a good year at ACG it's, it's, been um, good, it's been good and yeah shout out to subscribers for being loyal and sticking with us even when yeah I guess sometimes our content hasn't been the greatest or sometimes it's been a technical hitch or yeah. whatever yeah. Um, so yeah, no, appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Thank you. Um, it's been a good journey so far, and yeah, we believe it's just a start. So yeah, stick with us. What are you doing with wine, SP? Oh, oh you God. want the last bit? Do you want the last bit? No, 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 no. Thank you, bro. Um, so yeah, that brings us to the end of our 2020 roundup. Wait, whoa, whoa, no. I'm gonna raise the glass. Though. No, we're not. We're not at the end yet. I'm gonna do a quiz. And 2020, the year of football quizzes. <laughs> And I'm only doing the quiz because I know in my heart of hearts that about 80% of our subscribers and only followers, the they only tune in for the quiz. Okay. Um, SB, are you going to finish? I'm, I'm waiting. Like, cause I'm waiting for the quiz. Yeah. But okay. What? So um, what I've done this week, I'm going to take part in this quiz. Oh, crazy. Oh, shit. I haven't even got... You've not got pens. I've got a... The nah. SP's got a notepad, but he never takes it. Takes notes. Yeah. You don't have to write the answers on your, on your phone. I just, I just keep them in my head. Yeah, so I've got a quiz here that I didn't make. Oh, so I want to take part in the quiz yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because every week people, like, I get, I get a lot of DMs, along with my hate mail mm-hmm. and my fan mail. I get a lot of questions. I'm just, why don't you take, take part in the yeah. quiz? Uh-huh. So this week, I am going to be indulging. Let's go. In a bit of a, a bit of quiz. Over my screen. Yeah, so... um. As per usual, armchair gaffers at home. Get your pen, get your pad. Don't forget, guys, we're not the armchair gaffers. You're the armchair gaffers. You make this show. In case you didn't already know. Um, so it's got to find the quiz. Here's one I had earlier. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, cool. I won't tell you where this quiz is from, uh, but it's here. All right, I think, I think we've got, oh, this is a lot of questions. This is too many questions. I'm not doing that quiz. I only need five. <laughs> yeah, but we've got to do the whole quiz to get the answers. Mm, oh, this looks all right. No, too old. All right. Mm. That prep. Yes. There we go. 12 questions. This is a BBC quiz. Oh, we got the BBC. Um, so, question number one. This is like a Christmas, Christmassy kind of quiz as well. So, question number one. Who scored the first goal of 2020? Which French superstar scored an equaliser in the 84th minute for Manchester United to secure a 3 3 draw? At Sheffield Wednesday in the 1992 Boxing Day Clash. Clue, 
He had recently signed for the club from Leeds United. It's Rio Ferdinand. Okay, cool. Alan Smith. Where's my pen gone? Oh, you know what's mad about this quiz? They're not going to give me the questions again because I'm actually doing the quiz. Line up. Cool. Question number two. Which Irish teenager scored the decisive third goal for Coventry City when they beat title contenders Arsenal 3-2 on Boxing Day 1999? Clue. Obviously, it's the BBC. They give clues. He joined the Republic of Ireland national team as assistant manager in 2018. Question number three. Leicester City... Oh, by the way, this is the Boxing Day quiz. Yesterday was yeah. Boxing Day, so, no, no. you know. It's only right. Leicester City suffered a, suffered a crushing defeat on Boxing Day 2000 when Arsenal delivered a festive feast of six goals at Highbury. Who scored a hat-trick for the Gunners? Boxing Day 2000. That's question number three. I'm horrible when it comes to Boxing Day, so there's actually, like... Unless there's clues. There's no clue in that one. No, no, man. Except okay, that. question number four. Which previous Old Trafford assistant coach outwitted his former mentor, Sir Alex Ferguson, and led Middlesbrough to victory over Manchester United on Boxing Day 2000? The fucking tissue just got all over me now. What am I doing? <laughs> question number five. It's rolling around in it. Let me let my Okay. Charlton delivered a massive blow to Chelsea's Premier League title hopes with a stunning victory at the Valley on Boxing Day 2003. Who opened the scoring for Charlton with, a, with just 42 seconds on the clock? Multiple choice. Mm-hmm. Matt Holland, Herman Haridison, Jonathan Johansson, or Jason Yule? Matt Holland, Herman Haridison, Jonathan Johansson, Jason Yule. Holland, Haridison, Johansson, Yule. Question number six. Which English midfielder scored the injury time penalty to an Aston Villa point during a goal packed match at Stanford Bridge on Boxing Day 2007? English midfielder at Stanford Bridge for Aston Villa in 2007. Fucking hell. He has England caps. That's a clue. <laughs> What kind of clue is that? <laughs> Aston Villa midfielder in 2007 who had caps for England. There aren't many. Milner. Uh, was Gareth it a, Barry. A, a Villa at Ashley the time? Young. Exactly. It's one of that lot. That's what I mean. There's loads. Yeah, pick one. No clue? Question. Uh, England. That was a clue. England oh. midfielder. <laughs> Question number seven. Which Hull City manager gave his half-time team talk on the pitch in front of 3,000 away fans after conceding four goals in the first half of the Boxing Day match at Manchester City in 2008? Mr. Airpiece himself. The clue is no clue. And that was legendary, you know. Unbelievable. I think about it now. Imagine that today, the memes. Mm. Oh, <laughs> He's lucky he did it back then. <laughs> They went Instagram, was there? Well, the celebration after Jimmy Bullard's celebration, oh, he did right. the same thing. Isn't Question it? number eight. Oh, yeah. Which team were ahead on three occasions only to lose 4 3 in their Boxing Day fixture against Manchester United in 2012? Oh. No clue. There's no clue. Can I give a clue? Um, but Chicharito is on my pitch here, so I think he might have scored. Okay. Robin. Hmm? Question nine. He's got to put my answer in. Question number nine. Which ex Manchester United youngster had a day to forget when his own goal secured victory for his former team at Hull City on Boxing Day 2013? Multiple choice Tom Cleverley, James Chester, Johnny Evans, or Danny Welbeck? So, uh, playing for Hull against United. Scored on goal, Boxing Day. Cleverly, Chester, Evans, Welbeck. You're answering all these after as well. (laughs) (laughs) Question 10. Question number 10. 
think there's 12 questions. Arsenal manager Arsenal Wenger blamed his side's 4 0 defeat on Boxing Day 2015 Oof. on the officials, stating the first goal was offside, the second goal was a foul, and the third goal was a goal kick. Who did they lose to? 4 0. 4 0. Question 11. Okay. Well, I think there was a clue there. Now that I've seen the clue, I know who it was. Nice one, Jess. Henry McIntyre scored a spectacular goal in Manchester United's 3-1 victory over Sunderland on Boxing Day 2016. What type of effort was it? There's multiple choice. Was it a scorpion kick, a penenka, a rabona, or no look? That was 10, right? That was 11. Was that 11? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no. That was 11, so 10. I didn't put the team in. Didn't write it down. So this is number 12. Mm-hmm. 12 days of Christmas. On Boxing Day 27... Sorry, Boxing Day 2017 saw 17th place West Ham United take on Bournemouth, who were 18th. The game was hugely entertaining throughout... And with 10 minutes to play, Bournemouth fled 2-1. What was the final score? Was it 3-2 to West Ham? 2-2? 4-3 to Bournemouth? Or 3-3? I think Nathan Ake scored this game. And that's done. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, question number one. Uh, the question was uh, French superstar for United. Uh huh. What did you guys put in? I SP. didn't have anything. Eric Cantona. Eric Cantona was right. One. Take was question two. number two. Irish teenager for Coventry against Arsenal. Robbie Keane. The answer is Robbie Keane. I got that. Question number three. Arsenal hat trick against uh, Leicester. Thierry Henry. The answer was Thierry Henry. Mm-hmm. Number five, Middlesbrough against United. Steve. The manager? Steve McLaren. Steve, yeah. Steve McLaren. Number five, five. who scored the opening goal for Charlton, which is 42 seconds on the clock? I went Jason Newell. Same. The answer was? Kevin Disby. Herman Haradison. <laughs> I remember. Okay, Herman Haradison. Question number six, uh... Aston Villa midfielder scored an injury time penalty against Chelsea. Who was it? I went Milner. I went Milner. I'm pretty sure it was Gareth Barry. It was Gareth Barry. Damn, son. Uh, Hull City manager? Phil. Phil Brown. Phil Brown. It's only Phil Brown. And I think um, Jimmy Bull had done, he mocked him. The off, celebration, he? yeah. Yeah. He got relegated that year, didn't he? Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, which team were ahead on three occasions only to lose 4 3 in the Boxing Day game against Manchester United? I went Blackburn. Southampton? Newcastle United. Okay. Which ex United youngster had a day to forget when he scored it on goal uh, for Hull against United in 2013? I went Chester. McShane? He wasn't even, McShane wasn't even on the list. It was multiple <laughs> choice. <laughs> It was James Chester. Let's be that kid in class. He just doesn't listen. He's just smoking. It was two plus two. Class. 21. <laughs> uh, Arsene Wenger had a game to forget when he said the first goal was offside, second goal was a foul, and the third goal was a goal kick. Who did they lose to? I went Chelsea. I went Aston Villa. The answer Chelsea is Southampton. Shit. It's for a goal kick. Like, I think it should have gone out for a goal kick. Oh, sorry. Probably went sorry. for a corner, I'm guessing. Prevar. What kind of goal did Mkhitaryan score? Scorpion, Scorpion. KO. Scorpion KO. Uh, what number is this? 12. 12. It's the last one, yeah? Mm-hmm. So what's the final score in West Ham versus Bournemouth? I went 4-3 Bournemouth. The answer was 3-all. Uh, Fuck. I went 4-3. I already got 7. Okay, 1-2-3-4. Five, six, seven. Shit, man. I got seven as well. What Just, did you get? Oh, I had done this at home early run. So, <laughs> no, this one doesn't count, but when I did it at home early run, mm-hmm. I got three. Okay. All right. Great. Great. <laughs> yeah, so what did you get? And I had uh, seven. Okay, well done. So, yes, we got seven as well. Oh, oh. 
Sudden, sudden death. <laughs> um, uh, let's just do what I always do with capacities for stadiums. Okay. To the nearest 1,000. This is such an American concept, sports concept, where there are no draws. Yeah, what? Uh, we could just go home with one point each. Yeah. End the year. End the year. End the year. You want that one? No, it's not gonna happen. He wants drama. Cool. It's America. It's not. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> we got a great show. That's not gonna happen. Come on. What is the capacity of the Stadio Giuseppe Meza at San Siro, also known as the San Siro? Eighty-eight, five thousand. Eighty-five thousand from. Young SB. I've gone 48,000. Whoa. Whoa. The San Zero. I've been there as well. Same. I've been there as well. And it's at least... I've had a stadium tour on several... I've been in all the changing rooms. I was there. Not nice. You said 80,000. Yeah. We said eight. It's not even close to 80,000. You said 80,000. Wait, wait. You said... 48. No, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm talking rubbish. It's not 80,000. No, we've got to say we've got No, I'm answer. stuck with it now, but I realise it's not 80,000. United is like... 48, yeah? Yes, it's sir. It's about 60-something it is. 70-something. Dan, you are over 20,000 off. The answer is 75,000. I told you. Well, you're nearly 20,000 off. Like seventeen thousand. That's the San Siro is. So you remember 000. the seats? The seats are like this small, yeah. like yeah. little yeah. plastic the seats. The little extra thing where people got the little walkway. <laughs> yeah, like it's a big stadium. <sighs> yeah. SB man, congrats. Yeah, um, congrats. quickly before we wrap this up, do you guys know why Inter? Because Inter they Milan? were made by an Englishman. Yeah. More, More than that. Immigrants. Exactly. They weren't allowed to play. So prior to that, AC Milan, the only team in, well, the big team in Milan, only allowed Italians to play. Internationale allowed international people to play for them. <laughs> so um, that's the origin there. Fair play, man. Yeah. Yes. Is that the end of the show? That's that's the end of the year. I yeah. feel like we have so much more to talk about. Nah. We, we don't have to what? see each other again for a while. <laughs> you got a break from what? each other now. Yeah. That's it. Oh, man, that's crazy. Who's going to eat all the... Sweets. Oh, don't I worry guess about those. When in a new year, New Year's resolutions and all that, we'll probably have to start bringing in dried fruit. Yeah, and, 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 and nuts. drinking water. Yeah, yeah. and drinking water. Don't yeah. like the water a bit, but we can try. It's not very. Do you mind if I just say thank you to all the fans that have um supported us in our first three months? You they, know the the motto, the motto yeah. here at Armchair Gaffers is uh, continue to support us. And what we what we do then? We know it all. No, we will continue to support to su- you. We'll continue to support you. That was your motto. No, you made it up yeah. that day. You won, yeah, you won the thing. Sorry. Yeah, so keep supporting us. We'll keep supporting you guys. Mm-hmm. It really means a lot to us. All the contributions, all the, the nudes that we get. St- what? SB. The nudes? Save us. Save us. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm Literally, I'm done with the year. Yeah. I'm done with the episode. Done. And he's done with Ole. I I'm think, I think we're going Ole. live on, on Saturday or Friday, maybe. Uh, Yeah. Stay tuned on our Friday. socials, AC yeah. Gaffers on Instagram and, and Twitter. Twitter. Like, subscribe, Armchair share, Gaffers follow, on YouTube. Everything. Armchair Gaffers on Spotify. Bear in mind, guys, if you don't want to see us, you can always catch us on uh, Spotify. Uh, yeah, and, and that's it. Yeah, I think they're going to turn the lights out soon. Yeah. They might. What time Thank you. It's late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you get home in time. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, no, seriously. Thank you, and we'll see you in the new year with new year's resolutions and healthy food options and Thank crazy you. football hot takes. Keep um, yeah, peace. Peace, peace out. <laughs>